Awesome. Okay. So I'm super excited tonight um, to introduce Danielle to you. We connected on one of our leaders page. She was looking for someone to do a call. I was looking for someone to do a call. So we decided to exchange. Um, and she's going to talk to us tonight about her story and being a reformed quitter, which I'm really excited to hear about um, because I was definitely a quitter too. Um, she's a mom of two girls, married to her high school sweetheart. Sweetheart. Um, she was officially a coach in January 2014, full-time coach as of February 2015, so about a year. She's a success club legend, 42 months and counting. Um, and probably none of these other stats would be, um, I guess I should say, would have happened without that success club consistency where she was a 2017 um, top 200 elite coach she was premier in 2016 a six-star diamond she was a founder of dedication nation and she is a market council member so there's clearly a lot of consistency in there for someone who was a quitter so um i'm going to let you take it away and if you guys are not speaking i'm just gonna mute you so Danielle, awesome. get your notes out <laughs> all right thank you so much for that introduction thanks for having me guys um little disclaimer for you guys um one is i tend to swear like a sailor i try really hard not to on these calls just in case you have children in the room i have small children they're used to me swearing but yours may not be so um, you know, if they happen to be in the room, I'm really sorry. You can send me their therapy bills. Um, and then the second thing is that um, I am a hot mess. I am a self-admitted hot mess that like sometimes I will be mid-sentence and I will forget what I'm saying. So if I do that, please know it's not you. It is totally me. All right. So I'm going to kick things off and ask you guys a really simple question that I'm pretty sure I already know the answer to. And that's how many of you guys have quit something before you really even started? before you ever really gave it a chance, before maybe, okay, lots of hands, I love it. Okay, so let me just tell you, I can completely relate to you. I was the queen of quitting for the majority of my life. Now when I say that, um, it wasn't that I lacked success in my life, it was just that I was someone who, let's just say I was a job jumper when it came to my jobs. Um, as soon as things would get difficult, I would look for a new job. Um, it was actually a, a kind of a running joke with my husband and I that I had not held a job longer than nine months in forever. Um, in fact, actually Beachbody I've been with for about three and a half years, just pretty lengthy for me, if we, I mean, if we're being honest, compared to what I was like before. Um, and there's a reason for that. So I'm gonna start by just sharing a little bit of my background so that you guys can kind of get to know who I am and why this all came to be the way it did. So I don't have a health and fitness background, not even a little bit. I was not an athlete. I was not, I have no, I have, I have no education in that realm at all. Um, my parents showered me with tons of love and affection growing up, but health and fitness was not their forte. So um, I, I'm German Dutch, meaning I, you know, we're very much red meat, potato, like white potatoes, um, mashed potatoes, and then like, um, like usually like a canned vegetable. Like that's what I grew up with. That was like the staple of my life. Um, I jokingly say, but I'm half serious that I'm pretty sure I didn't have a real fresh leaf of spinach until I was like 20. Um, just, that's just how it was. Um, I, you know, I, I was reasonably, you know, I wasn't super overweight in high school or anything like that. Like, I mean, I was, I was always a little bit chubbier. Um, I was always super low self-esteem because I never really took care of myself. Um, and I always, I deep down wanted to, I just never wanted to more than I wanted to stay the same more than I wanted my life to stay the way it was. Um, so I would make these deals with myself. I would tell myself, okay, well, once I hit 200 pounds, then I'll do something about it. Okay, then that came and went. Okay, well, once I have to wear plus size clothing, then I'll do something about it. And that came and went. So I kept making these empty promises with myself in terms of changing my own life. Well, that day didn't actually come until my daughter Lily was born. She was born December, 2011. And you know, people will talk about their trigger picture or, or things, that, basically the, 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 the image of themselves that made them wanna take that, take that leap and make a change, right? And for me, it's the picture of me about to have my daughter in the hospital. And let me tell you, I'm gonna be really upfront with you guys, 
I think pregnancy and childbirth is an absolutely miraculous, wonderful, beautiful thing. I think the pregnant uh, female body is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so when I see that picture, it's, it, it has nothing to do with being pregnant. Like that's not what I'm seeing in that picture. What I'm seeing is 25 years of bad habits, 25 years of not working out, of not taking care of myself, of living off of fast food and junk. Um, so that picture made me want to make a change. I went from my doctor, like at the six week appointment, I had C-sections with both my girls. I went straight from my doctor appointment to Weight Watchers because I didn't know what to do. So when you, you know, question yourself sharing on social media or talking to people about this, please know there are people like me out there who have no blooming clue what we have to offer, okay? Um, so I went to Weight Watchers, paid a ton of money there. Um, I went to a, the only gym, the only gym in my, in my town. Um, I signed up for a two-year contract, paying $67 a month for the gym, and then $300 a month for working out with a personal trainer three times a week. Um, which is just insane. So like when people tell you they can't afford it, let me tell you, like I couldn't afford that, but I did it because I was desperate and I didn't know what to do. Um, I saw some success, but I plateaued pretty hard. I, uh, I didn't really take the time in either of those situations, my nutrition or my fitness to really learn what I was doing. I didn't really learn about what was good to put in my body. I just learned about portion control. And when you do portion control, but you don't really care about what the, what you're portioning, it doesn't really work so well. Um, so I, I, you know, I got frustrated and I, I had been looking at other fitness, health and fitness pages kind of on Facebook just to, um, surround myself with positivity and to see what other people were doing to keep myself motivated because my husband was not on this journey with me. He was supportive of me, but he was not on the journey with me. So it was really nice to have you know, a community of some kind to, you know, embrace and to who kind of understand what I'm going through. Right. Does that sound familiar? Challenge groups. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, I had heard about Shakeology and Beachbody kind of loosely um, through all of that. But I was, you know, I was, I was queen skeptic. I had no, you know, like, I was like, I don't need to shake. Like, I don't need that. Not to mention I don't have enough money, whatever. Well, I ended up getting connected to my now coach, Elizabeth Hartke. And um, I became the customer that everyone hates. I was the customer who I was in, I was in, I was in. She sent me a link and I did not do it. Not only did I not do it, I did not respond to her. I did that four times, you guys, four times. I was that person. I'm the person that makes you think, if I do something, like, is there a reason they're not responding? That's me. I was that person. Do not give up on those people, okay? Do not give up on them, because that was me. Um, and here's the thing. The reason I didn't respond to her, the reason I didn't tell her was because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed I changed my mind. I was embarrassed that I was skeptical of something she obviously loved so much. It wasn't anything against her at all. It was my skepticism and it was my self-doubt. Like, am I just going to whip out another 160? Actually, it was, at that time, it was $205, so it was T25. You know, am I just going to whip out all this money that I don't have? The other embarrassing piece. I don't have this money and I'm going to pay all this money and then not do it, not see results. So there were a lot of things going on with me that had nothing to do with Liz, nothing to do with what she did. My light is so weird. I feel like I look like I'm glowing. Um, so yeah, so she, you know, it wasn't her. Okay. I had to get to a point. It's, um, I think it's Keith Callahan is her, is our like upline upline. And he always says it's either inspiration or desperation. That's going to make you want to make a change. So, you know, I had to get to a point where I was so desperate, where I was so sick of being stuck where I was being plateaued, doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing. That wasn't working. Um, so I finally jumped in with T25 when that came out in July of 2013. Um, now a little backstory in my career, because this is all ties together in a very, really nice way, I think. <laughs> um, but I was the person that before Lily was born, my daughter Lily, she changed my life in both ways. Like, it's so funny because she started my health and fitness journey, but she also started my want for better. Uh, before she was born, I was actually, when she was born, I was in my last semester of my MBA. I was swearing up and down. I mean, I was like nine months pregnant, about to pop, and I swore I would never want to be a stay-at-home mom. Those of you that don't have kids, like, let me tell you, if you think you have your world figured out, those kids are going to screw it all up in the best kind of way, like, let me just, in the best possible way, but you don't have Jack figured out yet, okay? And it's not because you're not smart, it's not because you're not prepared, it's just because that's how kids work. So... 
I swore I'm not going to, I want to do, I don't want to be a stay at home mom. No way, man. No way. No, 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 no. Well, she came in and I was like, how the hell am I going to go back to work? I'm like, how am I going to do this? I had built my life in a way that I was going to be the breadwinner. Like I made twice as much money as my husband did at that time. And I had the benefits. Like I was supposed to work. Like I was supposed to earn the money. And now here I am like, I want to be home with my baby. Um, talk about feeling this like monkey on your back, right? This weight on your shoulder. Like I had to go back to work and it was like soul crushing. Now let me clarify because people like to get this mixed up when I talk about this. If you are a working mom and you like working outside the home, more power to you. Okay. Like I am saying this solely from my heart and my soul and what I wanted. I fully support all working moms. You want to work outside the home and you're like, I want to be home with my kids. Like I get it. There are days that I question my decision. Um, but for me, I knew that I would never truly be happy unless I was home with them. Even if it was going to be misery, even if it was going to mean screaming and snot and butt wipes and tantrums, like that's where I wanted to be. It was like dropping off a piece of my soul every time I took my daughter to daycare. It was awful. And maybe if I loved my job, I wouldn't have felt that way, but I didn't. I wasn't attached to my job at all. I was a metal buyer for an automotive company, like was not attached to my job. I was attached to the benefits, like sure, that was great, but that was it. So, you know, talk about, you know, spending 45 plus hours a week somewhere where you just don't want to be there. Like that is soul crushing. If you have not experienced that, it is not something I would wish on any person ever, not even my worst enemy. Okay. Um, but it was something I was resigned to because I'm like, we have this debt. I have six figures in student loan debt from getting all these degrees and MBAs. So I could be a working mom and now I don't want to do it. Um, we had credit card debt. When, when she was born, we were living with my in-laws because we couldn't even afford to live on our own. Like that's how bad our finances were. So needless to say, me quitting my job just wasn't an option. It wasn't even on the table. So fast forward again, I found Beachbody. I was really, I was open to the opportunity, but when I say I was open to the opportunity, I was mildly open to the opportunity because I was stuck in my own self-doubt. So when I signed up, when I got 225, I signed up as a coach, but I was a hobby coach. And when I say that, I mean, what I did was I posted haphazardly once in a while. Like I posted about my workout, oh, hey, sweaty selfie, cool. Um, never posted anything else outside of that. I never talked to anybody about it. Um, I hit success club my first month and then nothing after that because I wasn't doing the work. I believed in what Beachbody had to offer because I saw it in my upline. I saw it in other coaches. I believed it. I didn't think it was some scam at that point because I believed in the products within a few weeks of using T25 and Shakeology. I got off my plateau and I had hit my 50 pound loss mark and I was like kicking ass and taking names. It was amazing. I loved it. So I totally was behind the company. I was like, this shit is for real. You guys like, this is great. But I didn't think it would work for me. Like, I didn't think that the opportunity was something that I could do. Like, it's great for you. It's great that you saw success. But can I really do it? No. And then I thought I proved it to myself by signing up as a coach and not seeing success. Well, you know, newsflash, everybody. I wasn't doing the work. So um, I finished E25. And literally the next week, I find out that I'm pregnant with my second. I find out I'm pregnant with Valerie. Um, so it's uh, Halloween of 2013. Um, and the next day, the next day, I submitted my coach cancellation form because I'm like, well, if I wasn't doing it before and now I'm pregnant and I still have weight to lose, like there's no way in hell anyone's going to want to listen to me. So I submitted my coach cancellation form. Liz, being the wonderful coach she is, she reached out to me and was like, hey girl, how's it going? And I was like, oh, it's good. You know, hey, surprise, I'm pregnant. Like, haven't announced it because I'm only like five weeks along. Um, and she's like, awesome. She's like, why are you quitting? <laughs> and it was like, I was just like, well, obviously, like, you know, I'm pregnant. Like, I can't coach while I'm pregnant. And she's like, you know, I totally support you. She's like, I, I love you and I, I want the best for you. Um, and if this is really what you want, then that's cool. She's like, but I don't think you fully understand the power of this opportunity or the power of your story. And whatever it was in that moment, I was open enough to what she was saying that I withdrew my cancellation form. Praise Jesus. 
I withdrew my cancellation form. And then I became the coach that everybody hates. I just kind of lurked in the team page. I didn't really, I didn't ever talk. I didn't ever comment. I didn't ever like, I didn't do anything. I just kind of hung out um, until January of 2014. And that's when everything changed. Okay, so a little picture for you guys. I'm not sure where you guys are all from, but I'm from Wisconsin. And here it gets really cold, um, like negative 30 with the wind chill sometimes. And this is a particularly rough winter in 2014. And my daughter's daycare was closed. Um, my husband and I obviously both work. And um, that meant one of us would have to be home with her. Like, obviously, she's, you know, what is she? She's two. She can't be home by herself. Um, so I told my job, like, I'm going to work from home tomorrow because my daughter's daycare is closed. I had a laptop. I had a cell phone. I could do my job. My job was such that I could do it from my house. Um, and I remember that day so clear, clearly, like it was, we were sitting by the fireplace in my in-laws house and I just kicked ass that day. I mean, I was all over my work. Nothing fell through the cracks. I was blowing it up. It was awesome. My daughter was sitting quietly, which for a two year old, let's all just acknowledge how amazing that is by itself. My daughter was sitting quietly playing by herself nicely all day. Um, and I remember thinking, like, wouldn't it be amazing if this was my life? Like, wouldn't that be so cool if this was how every day looked? And as quickly as I thought the thought, I just kind of brushed it off. Like, well, that's not my life. I went to work the next day feeling pretty badass, like feeling pretty good about rocking all those things in my life, right? And I got called into my boss's office and I got reprimanded for missing work. And, you know, hormonal, pregnant, whatever, you call it what, call it what you want. I went back to my office and I just had this total breakdown. Like, how is this my life? Like, I mean, okay, I only got reprimanded. I know I didn't lose my job. I didn't get written up or anything. But like for me, like having a kick-ass day just to come in and say I didn't do enough or I didn't, I wasn't enough or it wasn't good enough even though I gave everything I had, like that was just the most defeating moment for me. So I went back to my office and I, I sat there and I, I remember going through all the things that, you know, it's almost like, like you, you see in a movie, you know, like I'm like screaming, you know, and then I'm like bashing my head against the keyboard. Like, what do I do? How is this my life? Like screaming at God, like, give me a sign, like show me something. Cause this cannot be my future. I'm pregnant with another. This is not going to get better. I don't know if you guys know, but when your kids are in daycare full time, their germs are just like through the roof. I mean, they are sick all the time. So I'm like, this, can, this is not going to get better. And so, you know, of course the, you know, God did not open the skies and speak to me in that moment. So of course I felt defeated, like, well, nothing's going to happen. Um, so what do you do when you feel defeated? You go on Facebook and you scroll mindlessly, right? So that's what I did. And I kid you not, every post I saw when I, when I started looking was from our team, was from my coach, was from coaches that had signed up the same time as me who were seeing super awesome success. They were talking about how much they love their jobs, how much they love their lives, how much, how awesome it is to have a, make a difference in people's lives, how awesome it is to have freedom in your life or build that freedom for yourself. And it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was like, it's staring me right in the face. It's literally right here. And so I sent my coach a message that moment while I was at work. <laughs> I was like, Liz, I'm in. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what I have to do, but you tell me what to do and I will do it because I am all in. I talk to my team all the time about all in, and I feel like sometimes it gets misconstrued. When I say all in, it doesn't mean you live and breathe this business 24 seven. When I say all in, I mean it is a mindset. It means that you will do whatever it takes to be successful in your own eyes. So not successful according to your upline, not successful according to Beachbody, but successful to you. So if your goal is just to get your Shakeology paid for every month, like all in to you would be, I am all in to make sure that happens. If you are all in like I was, that meant I was all in like, you tell me what I have to do to be home with my kids and I'm going to damn well do it. And I told her in that same moment, I want to be home in one year. I'm giving you one year to get me there. Like that's what we're going to do. And when I say get me there, I mean to get me to get me there. Cause really it's not her responsibility. It's mine. Um, and I'm not going to tell you that year was easy. No, it wasn't. When I made the decision to go all in, you guys, I was pregnant. I had a two-year-old toddler terrorist at home. I was working 45 plus hours a week. I had a husband I love, who I still my husband, who I still love. Um, we were buying a house and moving. It was not the right time. It was the only time. 
there is no such thing as the right time to do this or to take on this business or to, 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 to go after your dreams. There's never going to be like a, okay, everything in my life is calm and not busy and I can do this now. That doesn't exist. It's like, it's like a mirage. Like that doesn't exist in real life. Okay. There will always be reasons not to do this. You have to find the reason that is strong enough to make you want to do this. And until that point, I didn't have it. I didn't connect what I wanted most to this business and, and realize that this business was something that could get me there. So that year wasn't easy. It was, you know, it was a lot of stuff. I was a lot of sleepless nights. It was, it was tough. There were, I, I had some, a, a lot of crying that year. I mean, let's be honest, hormones are kind of a bitch, right? Um, I had a newborn, you know, I had a baby. I went back to work. Um, but I quit my job the next year. Um, it was, I missed my year mark. I think I gave my two weeks notice three days after the one year mark with Beachbody. Um, and I've been home with my kids ever since. And I just want to drive that point home with you guys. That is something for me that never would have been possible without Beachbody. Would never have been possible. I never would have been home with my kids without it. Okay. And it's hard work. I'm not going to tell you guys it's not. Like if you guys have big goals like that, big dreams, big visions for your life that you want this business to take you to those, it's going to take work. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take action. It's going to take a hell of a lot of personal growth mindset, right? But I want to go back to my, my, my quitting concept with you guys. So why is it that I was this chronic quitter and yet with Beachbody, even though I struggled, even though I've, I've had hurdles like every other person in this business, why have I not quit? And I can contribute to, to a few different things, all right? So number one is vision. I was crystal clear on what, where I was going, on what this business was going to do for my life, on, on what I wanted, and I knew I was not going to settle for less. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, no path to greatness has ever involved settling for less than what you really want. If you want greatness in your life, you can't settle. You can't look at plan B and go, well, I guess that's good enough. Because that's where I was headed. That was going to be my life, was I was going to constantly be living my plan B. Like, well, I can't do what I really want to do, so I guess I'm going to do this instead. So have a very clear vision for what you want for your life. You don't have to tie it to Beachbody right away. I want you to have a vision for your life because Beachbody isn't your life. It is the vehicle to take you to the life you want. So you have to have a vision. If you wanna be home with your kids, that's fine. That doesn't have to be your vision, but it has to be something. I'm not home with my kids. What's my vision now, right? Like it had to evolve. Um, so now it's paying off our debt. My husband lost his job earlier this year, something that would have destroyed us before Beachbody. And, you know, we're actually, we're actually pretty good. Like we're, we're, we're working it, right? We're going to make it work because that was always the plan was to get him home so that he can follow his dreams. Those are the things that I'm really passionate about is that kind of vision. Okay. You have to find something that just lights your soul on fire. People say why that makes you cry, call it whatever you want. I don't care, but it has to be something that just gets you so fired up that you don't want to sleep. My vision, when I wanted to quit my job, I would easily give up sleep and I love sleeping. Like, let me just be clear. I love my bed. I am not a morning person. I love naps. Like I love sleep, but I was, I was easily given up sleep then because I knew if I give up an hour of sleep right now, that will translate into me being that much closer to my goal. So, you know, don't, it doesn't have to be drastic sacrifice, but you have to give a little bit every day to get there. Okay. And you have to find the thing that makes it worth it. Cause if you aren't dialed into that, if you're just, Oh, I want to help people. That's great. That's where we all start. That's wonderful. And that's a great thing to hold on to, but that is not something that's going to be big enough for you to push harder or for you to, to, to move through those challenges, right? So you have to figure out your vision. Number two, your mindset. I did not believe in myself before this business at all. Major self-doubt. I still struggle with it. I'm not perfect. I'm not fixed. Um, but I have seen growth and that's from personal development. I mean, you guys hear about it all the time. I'm not going to be a broken record with you guys, but I was also the biggest PD skeptic surprise. You guys surprised at all that I was skeptical about PD. I mean, really like I'm skeptical, skeptical about everything else. Right? No, I was so skeptical about it. When my, when my coach was like, oh, yeah, I do personal development. I was like, wait, you mean self-help books? I was like, 
bitch, like I have an MBA. I do not need personal development. Guys, I needed it more than anybody. <laughs> like I still need it more than anybody. Like it, it's insane. You need to have your mindset clear. You need to have the right mindset. If you are doing all of the actions, but your mindset isn't in the right place, guess what? Ain't nothing going to happen, right? You're doing it all right. But if your mind's not in the right place, nothing is going to come to you. You have to believe in this opportunity. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your future, in the tribe that you have yet to create. You have to believe in it before you see it. All right, number three, reason why I succeeded in this, why I didn't quit. I accepted the challenges. Before this, like I said, when I would hit that first hurdle in a job, you know, the first person I didn't get along with, the first project that didn't go my way, I'd be like, well, that's it. I'd look for the next thing, right? With this, when I decided what my vision was and I attached that awesome vision to this opportunity, those struggles, those challenges did not seem so scary. Because when you look at it like, you know, we talk about getting outside your comfort zone all the time, right? You hear that all the time. When it's, it's something that scares you, you're more likely to face that with confidence and excitement when the possible result excites you than when you don't attach it to anything. Like when I just say, go and invite 10 people to your next challenge group, it's like, I have to talk to people. I have to invite them. Like, oh that's so scary. Like, so scary. But when I say, go and invite 10 people to your challenge group, because you'll be that much closer to this great vision that you have for your life, suddenly, that's not so scary. Rejection to me in this business doesn't mean anything anymore. If anything, I just go, why not? Like, come on. You know, like, I, I have very much the mindset of, I don't care if you say yes or, or you say no, to be honest, because I'm going this way. You can come with. You can come see the awesomeness that is over here, but if you don't want to, that's fine. I'm still going that way, okay? Once you accept that there will be challenges, it gets a lot easier. Like when you accept that, yeah, you're gonna have some emails that tell you some coaches are canceling. It's gonna happen. Those are really fun emails, I know. Yes, you're gonna have challengers that sign up with a challenge pack and then they might return it because they don't believe. You're going to have challengers who commit for a minute and then stop talking to you and fall off the face of the planet. It happens. You're going to have people who reject you. You're going to have people who criticize you and, and hate on what you're doing because they don't know any better. It's, it's part of this journey, guys. It's part of it. it. It just is. And the sooner you accept that that's part of this journey, part of being an entrepreneur, part of being a coach, it's a little less scary because you just know what's going to happen. You're prepared for it. It's not going to catch you off guard, right? Um, Summit two years ago, I think it was Christina Delgado talked about leaning into the storm, right? Lean into those challenges. I look at any challenge I face now as this is an opportunity for me to grow as a person. This is an opportunity for me to grow as a coach and as a leader. Um, look at that for yourself as well. Take positive away from the negative, right? Okay, number four reason why I succeeded in this and I didn't quit was because I was prepared to do the work. Because I owned the business for being a business. I knew that this was going to be my own business, meaning there was going to be no one telling me what I had to do, no one holding me accountable. This was on me. It was me and my vision. And I knew I had to work to make that happen. Nothing you want in life is going to come easy. Nothing worth having is going to come easy. Think about childbirth. Like, I know I'm using a lot of mom references, so those of you that aren't moms, I'm really sorry. But like, or even like <laughs> having a, a pet or something. Like when you get a pet, you know, to housebreak it, and you have to teach it, and then like sometimes they, they eat all your stuff, and it's just, it's, it's kind of annoying, right? And then childbirth is super painful, but at the end, what do you get? You get a baby. At the end, what do you get from a pet? You get a, a partner, a best friend, right? Think of relationships, marriages. Those aren't easy, but they're worth it, right? This business is the same thing. It's gonna be hard work. It's gonna be blood, sweat, and tears. You're gonna give all of yourself some days and feel like you're not getting it all back. Mm -hmm. But there will also be days that are amazing. It's funny, because I, I will take 100 no's, 100 haters for one person who believes, for one person who's willing to change their life. <laughs> That's how much I don't give a shit about the work and about the, about the rejection and about that stuff, like I don't care as long as it gets me someone who, whose life can be changed. Because that's why we're here, right? That's, that's our mission, to help people live healthy, fulfilling lives, right? So if I can help one person do that, I'm doing my job. 
And it, and it fills me up like you guys wouldn't believe. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I realize I talk really fast. This used to take me an hour to talk about this. Now it takes me half an hour, so go figure, right? <laughs> but I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. I realize I go super fast and I haven't checked the chat at all. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just unmute yourself and ask them. I don't have any questions. I just thought there were a lot of really good points. I know, Kayla, are you on? I can't like see everyone at once. Kayla T, I think she is. So Kayla was just talking about someone that she was talking to the mobile enrollment about and they stopped responding to her. And that was like one of the first things you said. You were like, yeah, I totally ignored her. And <laughs> so yep. Kayla, don't give up on them. No does not mean no forever. I just thought it was so, so funny. True. Literally right before the call, she was messaging me about it. That's so like, funny. She's like, the girl's really excited. And now she's... That was me. <laughs> you have another Danielle on your hands. Congratulations. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I thought that was really great, really different from a lot of our calls. And I'm sure I know a lot of people in the chat were like, I can totally relate. You're totally speaking my language. So um, I hope that. And, and I love too that I was someone that got a fast start, not because I wanted to get a fast like it wasn't that wasn't my goal going into this but I just did I just went once I started I just kept going and I love that you didn't because I feel like a lot of people feel like oh well if I didn't start right away I can never start and yeah not, not at all no way so never too late you guys have any questions Nothing. Hey, um, not really a question. I just want to say that I think you're awesome <laughs> because, like, I've I've been a coach for just over two years now, and it's been a really slow process for me. Like, I'll be all gung ho, and then I'll pull back, and I'll be in, and then I'll be out. I like struggles with anxiety and like family life and all kinds of shit just getting my way, and then um, just recently I just went balls to the wall and started going for it. And hearing you talk, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Awesome. You are so, not alone. Thank you for that. You're so welcome. And yeah, like that's, that's actually a really good point. And I think something that other people need to realize too is like I, like I said earlier, like all in is a mindset and it's, it's not going to be easy. Like you said, you're facing all these struggles. Like don't give up on your business when you're struggling in your life. You guys lean into it because I'll tell you that there have been times where I have faced struggles outside of my business. But because of this community and because I was so invested in this, it totally pulled me out of it. Like it totally gave me something of my own, something to lean on. You know, I have my challengers and my community and my tribe to lean on for support and encouragement. And that's just, it, there's nothing like it. So don't run from your business when that stuff happens, like lean into it. That's great though. Good for you, Chrissy. That's awesome. Thank you. Anyone have anything else? You guys are quiet tonight. <laughs> I feel like this call should have spoken to so many of you. Yeah, someone's raising their hand, Becky. No questions? If you guys think of anything after, feel free to shoot me a message. I'm an open book. No worries. No question. Um, I just totally, totally me. I feel like like similar situations happened at a job and and wasn't good enough and had to make a decision and it's definitely hit close to home so thank you you're welcome everyone's pretty yeah, I have a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so like i i have the thing where people ignore me like they'll be talking they ignore me all the time how often do you follow up with them because what i've been doing like every month. I'm like, hey, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it kind of depends on the person and it depends on what we've been talking about. Um, I would say I follow up, like if they want to join, okay, like let's use this example. If they want to join my challenge group and they're like, yeah, I'm in, let's do it. And then they kind of fall off face of the planet. Then I'll follow up maybe in a couple of days and then I'll follow up in another few days, and then in a week, and then usually right before the challenge starts, like the last time, like the last day of enrollment, 
Uh, and then if they still don't respond, then I kind of give them some space. Kind of like you said, like I'll wait like a month or wait till like my next challenge. And then um, depending on the person, I will either invite them to my next challenge group. Like, hey, I know like things happen. Like, I just want to see, I know you're really excited about it. I'd love to, for you to join this one. Um, or I will just kind of just check in with them. Like you said, like I'll just say, hey girl, how's it going? Like, just want to say hi. It just kind of depends on the person. Um, but yeah, I, I follow up a lot if they're really into the challenge group. If they, if they aren't or we're just still kind of in talks, then I might follow up every couple of weeks. Um, it just depends on the person. And to be honest, like it sometimes depends on my goals. If I'm at Success Club and I'm not really like pushing for it, then I might just kind of like, I might check in once in a while and then I'll push a little harder over my neck for my next group kind of thing. It just kind of depends on the person and the situation. Um, does that answer your question? It does. It does. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. And that's hard. And actually something else I've done is like, if I've checked in now like multiple times and they have not responded and it seems like they're just kind of like ignoring me, I will send them a message something like, um, Hey girl, I know you were really excited to do this. And I know we haven't been able to connect, but do you still want me to keep you on my contact list for the future? If not, I can take you off. Cause then it kind of puts the ball in their court and it might get them to like, if you, if you say it like that, sometimes they'll say, Oh no, no, no. I'm still totally interested. I just like I, bills came up or something like sometimes it gets them to at least tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they'll say, yeah, no, I'm not interested right now. Cause I'm doing X, Y, Z or something instead. And then, you know, okay, I don't have to follow up with them until maybe like a few months from now. And you don't have to feel bad about it. Um, so that's another, another thing, another script that I use kind of. I don't know if Melissa's on. Melissa, are you on? Yeah, she is. Yeah, I'm here. She says to people, um, can I ask what's holding you back? That's um, a good one. Which is really, because it, once again, same thing that you're doing, right? Puts the ball in their court to say like, what is it that, it's scary to ask them that, but I think it's a good conversation opener similar to, should I keep you on my, you know, should I keep mm -hmm. you on my contact list? And I've also, yeah, I've done that almost, oh, sorry. No, no, you're go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say almost every single time I've done that, when I say like, what's stopping you from committing or what is stopping you from, from making the commitment for 30 days, they always respond, you know, it's, well, I'm really busy or I just don't have the money right now. So there's, there's, there's always a way to kind of get them back into the conversation. I have, I have used that when people have said no to me, I've said, okay, can I ask why? Why, like, and I ask it, like, I think Bonnie Ingle, it was like one of her trainings where she says something like, um, you know, I'm always looking to get better. Like, I, I love sharing this with people and I love doing it in, in the best possible way. So if you could help me get better and let me know how I could have better shared the opportunity or how I could have, sometimes that gets them to open up a little differently and tell you a little more of the story um, as to what's holding them back or what, you know, made them shy away from it too. I like that. Cool. I like that. That was something, um, was that at the leadership thing that were you at summit Danielle? Yes, I was. Was when Brendan talked about getting feedback, was that at the leadership one or Yeah, the that was a leadership one. Yep, he's always okay. like oh, no, I well, I think he might have talked about it at both. Okay. When when Brendan Bruchard talked, he talked about how he always asked people for feedback like, "Hey, mm -hmm. how did I do?" Same thing, right? You always have to be striving to get better. So people be like, oh, like that was so awesome, blah, blah, blah. And he will not, not be like, oh, thank you. He'll be like, can you give me some criticism? <laughs> like, how can I get better? Yeah. 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 So that's something to really strive for, too. So cool. Anything else, you guys? No? Everyone's in awe. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't be. <laughs> And I'm chatting with your team on Monday, right? I believe so. Yeah, I'll have to check my calendar, but I'm pretty sure. All right. <laughs> okay. And I'm like the complete opposite of you. I'm OCD type A, so I will have a full PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> like, so just as a warning. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I actually, it's funny because I'm, I'm totally OCD type A in like every other area of my life, but this. Like, <laughs> like about like about these kind of presentations. I'm, it's all just me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I love it. It was great. It was awesome. So awesome. All right. Everyone have a great rest of your wet Wednesday and we'll chat with you soon. Thanks guys. Bye.